Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ian Douglas, and I'm your storyteller. And uh, you join me on a beautiful day, and uh, but it gives me a tinge of sadness because on days like this, I like to go down to Eureka in Halifax to tell stories. So I'm very sad that we can't meet down there at the moment. However, it doesn't mean that we can't have stories. And those wonderful people at Eureka have asked us to record a series of stories for you so you can enjoy them in your home. And uh, each week we'll be bringing you a different story with a different theme. And if you joined us last week, you'd know that I uh, paddled across the canal into the field over there and told you a story that was all about thoughts. This week has a theme but I'm not actually going to tell you what the theme of this story is. I thought it would be a lot more fun to give you a little riddle to think about. Now don't worry if you don't know what a riddle is, because I can tell you. A riddle is like a question, but it's a bit of a trick question. So you have to use your brains to see if you can get the answer. And don't worry as well, because the story will help you out that I'm going to tell you. And if you still can't get the answer, at the end, I'll tell you. So the riddle goes a little bit like this. I'm only one colour, but not one size. I'm stuck at the bottom, but can easily fly. I come out in the sun, but not in the rain. I don't do no harm, and I can't feel no pain. What am I? Now there's a tricky one, isn't it? Shall I do it one more time for you? Hang on then. I'm only one colour, but not one size. I'm stuck at the bottom, but can easily fly. I come out in the sun, but not in the rain. I don't do no harm, and I can't feel no pain. What am I? So there's my little riddle, something for you to ponder on as we tell you our story this week. And I thought, last week I took you across to the other side of the canal. This week I would bring you on board and uh, maybe we'd go on a little trip through the boat. And if you can remember, our boat's called Hawker, so I can introduce you to her as we go through the boat and tell you the story as well. And so, if my friends, you are all sitting comfortably. I shall begin. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, there lived a king. Now this king, he was a fair king and a kind king. And in all the years that he'd been king, and that was many, many years, he tried to make sure that everybody that lived in his kingdom had exactly the same chances in life, no matter whether you were rich or poor. He tried to make sure that people had fine homes to live in, good clothes on their back, plenty of food to make you healthy, and if ever you were poorly, you would have good doctors and nurses to care for you. Children would have good schools and great teachers to learn from. And all was well. But he wasn't just a fair and kind king, he was also very wise and he knew that sadly he wouldn't be around forever. And he wanted to make sure that the responsibility of looking after people in his kingdom went to the right person. Well the king had three daughters, an elder daughter, a middle daughter and a younger daughter. And he knew that one of them would one day be queen. And it lay to him to decide who would take on the reign. And so one night, the king sat in his throne as everybody else slept. And he scratched his head and he pondered until eventually he came up with a plan. He came up with a test to see which of the princesses was wisest. My dearest daughters, I'm going to give to each one of you a crisp 
five pound note with which I want you to go out into the world and buy something that will fill up my entire hall. Well, the very next day, the eldest daughter set off to see what she could buy with a crisp five pound note that would fill up the hall of her father and thus prove how wise she was. And as she walked along the road, pondering what she could get, she suddenly noticed up ahead of her, by the side of the road, there was a great pile of stones and earth, a little bit like this mound of stones that I've just found here by the side of the road. And suddenly she heard a sound and the sound was of a man digging. She could see that the man was digging a hole in the side of the road. And she approached the man because suddenly she'd had a bright idea. My good man, I couldn't help noticing the mound of soil you have there and I wondered how much I could purchase for a crisp five pound note. For a fiver, madam, you can have the lot. I'll even bring it round for you on my track. Oh, that's jolly decent. The princess went back to the throne room and she took with her the great mound of earth and stones that she'd bought for the five pounds she'd been given. And sure enough, when she took it into the throne room and showed the king, it was indeed a huge pile of earth and took up quite a lot of space. And the king was quite impressed. Well, the princess, she stood looking smugly, thinking that she had indeed proved she was wisest. But the king stopped and said, hang on, before you get carried away, there are still two daughters to return. Well, at about the same time as the eldest daughter had arrived back at the castle, the middle daughter, she had already taken to the road. And she too, just like her older sister, was pondering as to what she could buy with a crisp, five pound note that would fill up the hall of her father. Well, she walked further than her oldest sister. And as she cleared the kingdom, she went out into the countryside. And up ahead of her, she could hear the sound of a machine whirring. And as she wandered along the road, she could see over the hedgerow, there was a farmer. And at that moment, the farmer he was cutting the meadows around his farm. And I've brought you out here into a little wild meadow that's just by the side of our boat at the moment, just so you could kind of picture the scene. And the middle daughter, she saw the grass and the wild flowers being cut on the ground and she could see the heap of it that was being left behind by the machine the farmer was using. And suddenly an idea came to her mind and slowly she approached the farmer. Excuse me, uh, farmer chap, I couldn't help noticing your big mound of grass uh, over there and wondered how much I could purchase for a crisp five pound note. My oh dear, you can have as much grass as you like for a fiver, I'll even bring it round on the cart for you. Oh, that's jolly decent of you. And so, the middle daughter finally arrived back uh, at the castle and she took the mound of grass and wild flowers that, that she bought from the farmer to the throne room. And sure enough, it was a huge pile of grass and wild flowers and the king was mighty pleased. And the middle daughter, she looked even more smug than her elder sister but then suddenly the king he stopped and he said now just wait before you get carried away don't forget you have a younger sister and she is yet to appear and so at the same time 
As the middle daughter arrived back at the castle, the youngest daughter, she set off on the road. Now her journey was the longest journey of all. Wandering along, pondering at what she could buy with a crisp five pound note to fill up her father's throne room. She walked all the way through the city. And before she knew it, she'd cleared the city and was now walking through the countryside that surrounded the city. And she walked all the way round the city and back through the southern gate. But as she wandered up through the streets of the city, looking at the shops and the buildings, suddenly ahead of her, she saw a bright, shining sign. Oh, I wonder what that is. It appears to be some kind of high street shop. I fancy I'll go inside. I want to live with common people. I want to do what common people do. Dooby dooby dooby. When the youngest daughter arrived back at the castle, she went up to the throne room and under her arm she was carrying her shopping bag. Well, in one corner there was the mound of earth and in another there was the mound of grass and wild flowers. And her two sisters, they stood with their arms folded and they started to laugh, looking at their youngest sister with nothing but a carrier bag. How could that, or its contents, possibly fill up a room? Well, the king, he looked sternly at his youngest daughter, and he was about to speak when suddenly he noticed his youngest daughter putting a hand inside the shopping bag, and she pulled out the simplest of things. She pulled out a candle, and then there in the throne room she asked that the servants close the shutters so the room was in near darkness. And as the room was plunged into darkness, suddenly her daughter showed how wise she really was. She took a match and she lit the candle. And as they all watched, they could see the light of that candle grew brighter and brighter and brighter. And suddenly the king smiled as he watched the light of that candle fill every corner of that darkened room. And he knew that his youngest daughter was indeed his wisest daughter. And on that day, the king, he proclaimed that she would be the one to take over leadership of the kingdom. She would be the one that he would leave in charge to make sure the people that lived in his kingdom lived their lives in the best way that they possibly, possibly could. Of course, I can't go without giving you the answer to the riddle. And if you haven't got it already, I can tell you that the answer to my riddle was shadow. And uh, we've been using shadows right the way through our story. And uh, maybe next week, uh, we'll show you how to make some of the shadows inside our stories. But until then, ta-ta for now. Take care. Bye-bye.